All right, so I got a box from ZWO that we're gonna open today, and it's it's the new Mono Duo. And as you know, I'm a, I'm a narrowband channel, okay? I like doing narrowband imaging. This, this right here, this is my 1600 mm Pro. This was the first big censored mono camera that I ever bought. And I gotta say, I've gotten some phenomenal images out of that guy over the years. All right, let's move you. Now, it'll be interesting. This isn't just gonna be an unboxing video. I'm gonna tell you some things, that, some of the ways that I'm gonna test this, which hopefully will be unique to my channel. Uh, this right here is the box that the color version came in. And it'd be kind of interesting to see if they've actually changed the packaging or if this is packaged at all. Cause I know this is a, uh, I think this is a pre-production, maybe a pre-production model. We'll see here in a second. And, oh, no, it, it is in a genuine box. So I did get the, the monstrous seven slot filtered filter wheel. And there's a reason why I got the seven. Uh, number one, because I do intend to do some RGB work for this thing as well, but mostly I want to test a lot of different filters with this camera to to see like you know what will work and what won't work because I know there's a lot of questions out there as to what kind of what if this will work at all you know because a lot of people are very very skeptical you know a lot of people were skeptical about the Keller version that it was going to work at all. And of course, I'm sure there's going to be even more skepticism surrounding the mono version. So let's put that aside and get the actual camera out. There it is. I think we can get rid of that box. Yeah, when the UPS guy showed up, I was like, ooh, that's the expensive box. So yeah, these boxes are a little bit different. A little bit of size difference. They've kind of minimized the packaging a little bit. This is the new mono version. That's the, this is the one shot color version. Now, some of the filters that I'm gonna test, I, I'm actually going to put a dual band, uh, six and a half nanometer filter that I have in front of this thing, just, just to kind of see what happens, okay? And then another thing I have, a, I have a full set of SHO five nanometer filters coming from SV Boney, which should be here any day now. And I'm also gonna test them obviously. And then something else that I'm going to do is in this, in this filter wheel here, I'm going to, I'm going to make a 3D printed carriage, okay? Cause th these are two inch slots but I'm gonna 3D print a carriage that will allow me to put some of my one and a quarter inch filters in here. Now, obviously I'm not gonna image that way. I just wanna see if the guiding will work because I have some one and a quarter filters that are six nanometers, seven nanometers, eight nanometers. And I also, I think I have some three and a half nanometer filters, which are pretty narrow. And I wanna see if they will work with the guide camera because that's the question that everybody's asking. Okay, let's get it out. It's always fun to unbox new stuff. And, all right, let's, and I'm gonna test it with a couple of different scopes. Obviously the main test bed that I'm going to use is my big SV Boney 122 millimeter Apple uh, triplet. That's the main one that I'm going to test it with. And, but I have some other other telescopes. Like I'll probably try it out with the Sharp Star, my little 61 EDPH Mark II uh, to see if it'll work. Because that, that way we can get like, you know, big telescope, small telescope kind of comparison. Like these are the two scopes I'm mainly gonna test. This guy right here, and then my little Sharp Star back here which I gotta say, looking at this filter wheel, man, this thing's monstrous. It's gonna be like the entirety of my scope's weight. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to seriously rebalance this thing when I attach this. But anyways, if you go back and look at my other video that I did on the Duo, one of the things that I extensively tested with several different scopes was that I printed these aperture rings basically to stop the scope down to slower apertures. And I'm going to do that as well for this test as well. 
But if you're curious and you don't want to wait and you want to see kind of how the duo performed, you know, go back and check out that video. I'm going to link to it at the end of this one. Basically looks exactly the same. And, but it does say on the side, the MM Duo, which is probably the only way I'm going to be able to differentiate these two cameras. <laughs> and there you go. There's the two of them side by side. They look exactly the same, you know, because one's a color sensor and the other one's a mono. Now, there's actually, <laughs> you know what? There is, there's definitely a difference though in the glass. I can, I can see it right away. There's like a purple reflection or pink reflection, I should say, on the Keller version. Probably because there's a UV IR cut coating on that one. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up again and see if there is one. Whereas the mono one, it's just a straight piece of glass. There's, there's no, there's, there's no blocking whatsoever in the mono version because the mono version, we want it to be universal and and able to work with any kind of filter, even filters that go beyond the visible range, which should actually be of interest to us because if this guy's blocking light that goes beyond the visible range, with some of my filters, this one actually may perform a little bit better because that window is not blocking it. At least, you know, just this just, just, just my initial impressions. Now, here's another thing. So if you already have the color Duo version, and you're wondering to yourself, is it going to work? Okay, with your telescope, because your mileage will vary based on the image circle size of your telescope. Let me give you some words of wisdom here. Don't ever take the manufacturer's word about the image circle size of your telescope, because what they talk about often when they talk about image circle size. They're talking about the corrected image circle. They're not actually talking about the actual illumination. Okay. In other words, how big that, like if, if we were to shine the telescope, a light through the telescope onto a table, how big is that light dome going to be? That is a number that nobody ever gives you. Okay. That's kind of something that varies quite a bit from scope to scope. And, and, and actually even across two scopes that are similar size, for example, if you go back to my video where I, I reviewed the ASCAR 120 that I bought, it had a larger corrected image circle, but a smaller illuminated image circle. And so I found it more difficult to guide with that scope than my SV Boney. There are two scopes that are almost the exact same focal length, exact same aperture, uh, exact same uh, kind of focal reducers. You know, they're both 0.8 focal reducers. And yet there is a significant difference in the performance between the two. And that's because the illuminated image circle size was of a different size. It was smaller on the ASCAR than it was on the SV Boney. So if your scope doesn't have a large image circle, and oh, by the way, a lot of scopes have smaller than two inch image circle sizes, you may, you may see, you know, issues with guiding with something like this. You need a scope with a big image circle size. I think no. Now that being said, that didn't actually prevent me from guiding with this, the Keller version, on any of the scopes that I have used so far. All of them, this was enough. It, the the guide camera wasn't sensitive enough. But anyways, okay. Let, let me get back to. I was, was going to answer a question here. If you already have the Keller version, okay and you're wondering, will it work with my setup? Okay, will a mono version work with your setup? Simple solution. Throw your narrowband filter in front of your Keller version and test it, all right? Because the guide sensor in this guy is the same for the two cameras, okay? I actually could probably do all of my testing with this. However, I got a feeling there's gonna be a very slight difference because this has a UV IR cut window in it, whereas the Mono one is just straight glass. So there's actually more light getting into the sensor of this one. So, so we'll see. Um, I've got lots of work to do. I've got lots of testing. Unfortunately, it's gonna be cloudy for a week. I know, that never happens to me. <laughs> Usually when I get Mono gear, I have, I have clear weather. We'll see. But anyways, gonna, got lots of cool videos that I'm gonna do about this guy. 
and I'll probably capture some pretty neat images. Uh, this is my first big mono sensor and I'm pretty excited to use it.